Hi, I'm Peter Lichtenberg, Director of the Institute of Gerontology and Professor of Psychology at Wayne State University. Today I'm talking about the importance of community engagement and research registries. We're going to be talking about community-based participatory research and participant recruitment and retention. We're going to examine the need for increased participation by blacks in health research understand core aspects of disparities, learn the steps involved in creating a vibrant registry, and view an example of how this registry can spur cognitive aging and dementia research. Summarize and then provide references. I have nothing to disclose. I'm the co-director of the Michigan Center for Urban African American Aging Research, along with James Jackson at the University of Michigan. He and I have led this center for over 20 years. Unfortunately, nationally, differences in life expectancy due to race and educational differences are widening, and many may not catch up. This, despite the intense focus on health disparities uh, from the National Institutes of Health, and it shows that way beyond health factors, the social characteristics impact life expectancy. And if you look at the author list, Tony Antonucci, James Jackson, both from our center were authors on this seminal paper. We're going to attempt to answer these questions. What are health disparities? What is the Mukwar and Healthier Black Elder Center? What were the stages in its development? And what lessons can we share? 2004, the Institute of Medicine put out this seminal work, Unequal Treatment, Confronting Racial and Ethnic Disparities in Healthcare. This slide aims to distinguish between difference and disparity. Patient preferences would be an example of differences. Clinical appropriateness would be an example of differences. In contrast, discrimination, biases and prejudice, stereotyping and uncertainty would be a disparity, as well as the operation of healthcare systems and what's uh, and the legal and regulatory climate within which they operate. The Healthier Black Elders Center is the community outreach and education component of the Michigan Center for Urban African American Aging Research, which in addition to having its community mission, has a mission of mentoring minority faculty members in aging and health research. It's a collaborative research and administrative effort based on both campuses, Wayne State University and the University of Michigan. And it's a very diverse group of educators, community members, national advisors, and researchers. Our approach to engaging with the community in research is that involvement in research can help reduce disparities because it breaks down barriers of communication between minority groups and those involved in the healthcare system. So we sought to look at, well, what's the normative experience for African American elders in terms of being approached for research? In this telephone survey, a random sample of nearly 1,300 African Americans over the age of 60 were approached. Only 20% had been contacted ever in their life to engage in research, and surprisingly, th three quarters had agreed to. 75% stated that the researchers had treated African American elders well, but 14% felt they were treated poorly. Our conclusion is that the likeliest barrier to research participation is the lack of being invited to participate not the resistance once people understand what the research is all about to participation. So the MUCWAR is a complex center grant with an administrative core and a community core. I mentioned James Jackson. He is the overall PI, and you can see his picture in the upper left-hand corner. 
Our most recent Community Corps co-directors were Letha Chadiha and Carmen Green. Our mission, to promote high-quality scholarly research and community-based interventions focused on health and health promotion among older racial and ethnic minorities. It's funded by the National Institute on Aging. It, the Community Corps provides education that's relevant to the needs of older minority community members. We didn't want to use Mukwar in the community, and so our advisory board helped us come up with this group, Healthier Black Elder Center. Not Healthy Black Elder Center, because we wanted everybody to feel involved. Even if you're in poor health, you can get healthier, and so our name was Healthier Black Elders. This slide really shows that from the NIA, the National Institute on Aging, the MUCWAR is funded. The Healthier Black Elders Center is a community part of the MUCWAR. And as part of that, our participant research pool or participant registry. This is a database of older African Americans willing to participate in research studies on aging. Let's talk about our structure, guiding principles, and relationships with participants. Our fundamental belief is that year-round programming and multiple ways of delivering information and bi-directional communication is key to successful community engagement in minority communities. So on the left, you can see our Wednesday's Lunch and Learn. This gives older African Americans direct access to health professionals who are uh, there to give more informal talks and answer questions on a variety of topics. We poll our, our um, Healthier Black Elders group on what kinds of topics people are interested in. In the middle is the um, Healthier Black Elders invitation to take part in our participant registry. And then on the right is an example of our biannual newsletter that's written for lay folks to describe what's going on in our center as well as some broader things happening health-wise in the city of Detroit. So the building the science of recruitment and retention has been one of the goals of our center. And this article by first author Letha Chadiha Building a registry of research volunteers has been a real linchpin for uh, the NIA and for this type of work, in part because of this logic model. It really lays out step by step the assumptions, the resources, the activities, immediate and short-term outcomes that we're looking for. Look at the resources. We need older adults, of course, researchers, a community advisory board, older adult volunteers. We need to participate with service delivery agencies. We need financial sponsors. And we need a community outreach specialist to organize all of this. Activities inclu include the Consumer Health Learning Education Series, monthly, quarterly CAB meetings, annual health reception, semi-annual newsletter. And our outcomes are getting good attendance and then participation in the registry. So let's look at a brief history then. In the first five years of having the grant, the, center, the Healthier Black Elder Center was housed in the Center for Urban Studies. We began a community advisory board, but we had no real infrastructure to support expansion. This can't really be a one-person job because what that ends up being is just a series of presentations, but no connectivity between the groups. So the Healthier Black Elder Center came to the Institute of Gerontology at Wayne State University in 2002, where we already had community outreach and engagement efforts. We also adopted community-based participatory research principles, equitable partnership with community members, Relevance of health issues to the community, in other words, getting that good bi-directional communication input. Disseminating results back to the community, not just doing what's called helicopter research, come in, do the research, the community never hears about 
the results. But very important to disseminate these back and a commitment to long-term sustainability. Some key goals then, breaking down educational and healthcare barriers. So knowledge is power and also familiarity really gives people empowerment. Developing partnerships, removing barriers to African Americans participating in research. As we said, the biggest barrier is people not getting asked. So these partnerships really broaden our ability to reach African American elders and ask them to participate. Our goal to create a healthier Detroit through research and community outreach and to reduce health disparities among African American seniors and their families. Finally, promote healthy aging and creativity. And of course, because we're a research center collecting data associated with the health of African Americans. The Community Advisory Board and the Participant Resource Pool Registry Oversight Committee is very important. The Community Advisory Board advises our center staff relative to its structure and process reviews current activities, gives input on future activities and research. Actually, it's part of the review process for surveys and printed materials for dissemination. Ensures the safety of participants and quality and integrity of research by actually reviewing proposals after institutional review board approval has been obtained at the university and seeing if there are additional concerns that community members have provide oversight to the uh, participant pool and the use of its database, and then assist in recruitment of minority elders and the annual Healthier Black Elders event. Our Healthcare Community Com Consumer Learning Series was created in 2005. It's free to those 55 and older and their caregivers, and it's in the broader Detroit metro audience. We partner with churches, senior apartment complexes, and senior centers. Some of the topics that have been of special concern to African Americans, hypertension, diabetes, prostate cancer, and more recently, Alzheimer's disease. We have six to 10 of these annual healthcare consumer learning series each year and evaluations for each one of them, the semi-annual newsletter, and of course, our participant database. Recruitment for research, we do health screening as well, and at our annual Art of Aging conferences, we do uh, health reception evaluations. We show these pictures to show how engaged people can be in community activities. It's really a celebration for older adults engaged in research through the participant resource pool and learning series attendees strong message about healthy aging in the African-American community. It's very important to approach communities that are ex experiencing health disparities with a positive attitude in terms of what their resiliencies are and their strengths. Otherwise, uh, they're not interested in listening to another group telling them that uh, they have challenges. They know that. And so we engage in a variety of ways to get information out as well as celebrate the opportunity for us to be together and for group learning. And you can see our annual reception uh, always fills to capacity. The participant resource pool is how we enable more African Americans to be engaged in research. We have a pre-survey, and then we do telephone surveys that take about 20 minutes to enroll people into the registry. So you can see that over the years between 03 and 09, uh, we increased from 100 to 1,200 individuals into our registry. So we learned along the way how to recruit more people in terms of the registry. And I think it just went hand in hand with the increase in trust that Healthier Black Elders 
Center has in Detroit. We also, most recently, 2016, looked at promoting retention. How well did we do in keeping people in the registry? And in this table, you can see our participant characteristics. Over 1,700 individuals were involved. Overall, active or inactive, uh, nearly four and a half years in the registry was the average. Now with that inactive group, I want to point out that only 6% of our sample actively said, I no longer want to be in the registry. The rest are either victims of mortality or they moved and we could no longer contact them. So with this robust retention, we were also interested in knowing, well, what kinds of things, demographic factors, health factors, and so forth, relate to people staying active in the registry? In terms of health factors, mobility problems did reduce people's involvement in the registry, as did medical problems in total. But actually, being referred to studies and the number of studies people were referred to was probably one of the most powerful predictors. In other words, if we were actually engaging people in the research and offering them multiple opportunities, they were much more likely to stay engaged. So establishing multiple ways to enhance the lives of older black adults also enables a strong registry to be built. Keeping participants actively engaged in research opportunities enhances engagement and continued participation or retention. And by 2012 to 2017, we had over a dozen studies each year and over 500 participants from the registry each year engaging in research. As you can see here from these references, the models out there for recruitment and retention of older African Americans uh, can vary a little bit depending on whether people are studying a single disease or whether they're more broadly um, launching a participant registry of African Americans who can be involved in a number of different types of health research.